In back segment tonight, this afternoon, Senator Marco Rubio, who is running for president, gave a foreign policy speech in front of the Council on Foreign Relations here in New York City. Senator joins us now. So keeping it simple, what's the most important thing America has to do overseas right this moment? Well, there's three things that should underline our foreign policy. The first is the acknowledgement that the world is a better place when America is the strongest country in the world. And that's why we need to increase our military spending, get rid of this horrible reductions that we've seen, and also our intelligence capabilities. They have to be robust. It is important that we reauthorize the Patriot Act. Second is America's foreign policy needs to keep in mind that in the 21st century, global commerce matters more than ever. We cannot allow any, we cannot allow any nation on Earth to control shipping lanes, airspace, the cyberspace, outer space for that matter. Okay. And the third is our foreign policy should always be built on our values as a nation. We support freedom. We support nations and people who aspire to democracy. We support human rights and the respect of human rights. But we can't nation rights. build anymore. It no, didn't work in but Iraq. You don't have to. No, I, I agree. There's another way to do it, but you can't get down and try to convince the Afghans to, you know, be Democrat. No, but give you an example, Cuba, right? So we're doing all these relations with Cuba under the president, but and none of this is there ever a discussion about democracy, which is not just in our national interest, but is a strong value of the United States. But as you know, the uh, thinking is if we get in there, we being the United States with our value system and people go there and spend money, the Cuban people say, hey, you know, we're we want to be like them, so it's one of those. But, but it, I, that didn't work in Vietnam or China. There's no, still but Cuba is only 90, 90 miles away. I think it might work. I, I, I think that the, the, the influx of, of dollars and, and Americans into Cuba might give those people saying, you know, we really don't like this anymore. Yeah, but all but of that will go into a government holding company that owns the entire economy. That's right. And who is not giving any kind of freedoms at all right. to the, you know, no human rights. Uh, they didn't do anything. All right, let's get to uh, Hillary Clinton. If you win the nomination and your campaign's off to an impressive start, and I'm not saying that, the polls show that. Um, where, where is she weakest? I mean, where well, is Hillary Clinton weakest? And to answer that question, let's understand where we stand. For much of our, the 20th century, America was the greatest country in the world. Some very basic promises. We were the most powerful nation on earth, but we had an economy that told you, if you work hard in this country, you may not be rich, but you'll own a home, you'll be able to raise your family, take vacations, retire and your, with your dignity. your parents did that, right? They lived that out. Now right. it doesn't exist anymore for millions of people. And everyone's wondering why. Why don't the old way of doing things work anymore? The answer is because the world, our economy, and the world has rapidly transformed. We need transformational leadership, leadership that understands yeah, but, but this that, new those era. Those are all slogans, though. But no, but Mrs. It's Clinton's going to say to you, if you're debating her, look, I'm going to have government programs that's going to lift people up and stop this income inequality. I'm going to do this, all right? So is that a weakness for her to well, say that? But they're not, first of all, they're not slogans. It's what's happening in our country. And the proposals she's going to come forward with are the same tired left of center proposals that are failing us now. But, the but, exact but same Obama ones. says, the president says, hey, I got us out of a depression. My policies are successful, and it goes around and around in America. Not, around. Because her policies, number one, in a global economy would make us less globally competitive. You can't raise taxes, increase regulations, grow your national debt, and expect to be able to compete with dozens of developed okay. economies. But that's a Wall you Street can't. Journal argument. I, you got to get down. But I'm no, not giving not. them advice here. No, but you got to be a gut fighter here. Look, Romney and, and McCain tried to do it. What you're saying they tried to appeal to the american sense of traditional economics and traditional defense right and they lost but that that but the problem is that today you have millions of people that are finding that the jobs they've had for 20 years don't allow them to be in the middle class anymore why because this new economy is either wiping out those jobs or they don't pay enough so you've got to have an economy not just that creates the new jobs that pay more but you have to have a higher education system that gives people 21st century skills and she wants to pour money into the same tired programs that don't give you those skills. But those tired programs are now supporting 50% of American households, well, are getting some kinds of means tested, which is beyond Social Security and Medicare, money, and they don't want to give the money up. Well, so I don't those, necessarily those, that's her constituency. I think the vast majority of Americans would prefer to have a better paying job, but they don't have the skills for that higher paying job, or America isn't creating enough of them, because we're not globally competitive. Well, we have to unleash the free marketplace. But, but Hillary Clinton herself, all right? You going to attack her as being a dishonest woman? Are you going to do that? Well, I'll tell you what we can't afford. No, 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 no. no. Are you going to say? This point. Are well. you going to say that Hillary Clinton's <laughs> dishonest? Look. We don't need any drama in the White House at this incredible hinge moment in our history. You're going to put pack in the White House two people uh, who have been everywhere they go, bring drama with them. This country cannot afford another eight years of a soap opera. Are you going to point out what the dramas are? Absolutely. We see what they are already. So you're, you're going to go time. and say, listen, here, 
look, I would, if I were running for president, I'd say, listen, I want the FBI to investigate the Clinton Foundation. Well, her time at the sec as Secretary of State is now filled with drama because of the email scandal. Her, the foundation is filled with drama because of ties between the foundation and business deals. Do you want an FBI investigation into that? I, if it's appropriate. First of all, they Do you should think be forthcoming. it's appropriate? Well, we don't know enough about it yet. But how Obviously, are we ever going to know if the well, FBI doesn't investigate? Well, ultimately, I think we are going to find out more about these how? cases. And in particular, well, you know, the, the House Oversight Committee is looking into the email problems. And from that, I think we'll know a lot more information. But the House the is true. looked at the IRS scandal and couldn't get well, to and that's because base. the Justice Department doesn't want to move forward on it under this president. But the truth is that if this evidence were to come forward, it would yeah. compel them to act. But at the end of the day, Americans see it for what it is. They understand that we are in a time of extraordinary uncertainty about our future. What kind of country are we going to be? We cannot well, afford big. to have drama in the White House. All right. All right. It's fun. Is it fun so far for you? It has been. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a lot honor. of work. And it's they're gonna. If you start to become the front runner, you're gonna get attacked. You're ready for that. Yeah, that happens all the time. You're gonna be a sexist. You're gonna be a racist. You're gonna be whatever ist they can put on you. You know. <laughs> well, that. but you're always welcome here, and we appreciate you. you coming on in. Thank you. All right, directly.